Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino inviting you to an adventure in which we shall be simply installing Linux Mint 22. I was always curious about installing actually Linux Mint and my wife's change of laptops, including her request to put Linux on her old one, is now the opportunity to try out things and yeah, to just see how it goes along. I have been installing Linux a couple of times, but not specifically Mint. And so that's going to be simply an adventure, an experience, uh, some of good and bad things that are about to happen now. So I press simply enter onto the default option and I am about to install Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. Uh, so, what? No, okay, everything is as it should be or what? <laughs> okay, for a moment it had me there in particular when it started to show records in and records out and I was thinking, what exactly are you doing DD on to? because that's what I would normally expect to see this in connection with. So anyway, let's see how hard is it to install Linux Mint. And how long will it take? This is a machine of about a decade age, Intel i3 processor. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad L440 with an Intel i3 and with RAM upgraded to its maximum, 8 gigabyte. All right, we're getting to see a cursor. And now we are seeing the Linux desktop ready to be installed and the Wi-Fi ready to be connected. Now that is a thing that I shall do now, connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, and the connection has now been established. I'm going to say install Linux Mint. Let's see how beginner friendly this is or isn't. I mean, okay, not exactly being a beginner, still <laughs> I'm curious to see what experience this will deliver. I find it funny that the clock now looks like that, asking me for the language. Yeah, I would like to have English, please, yes. But I don't want an English keyboard, I want a German keyboard. So there we have it, German Austria, yes please. And I can type there, you know, like like things like Ö and E and Ü and SZ. So they're all there where they should be. Yes, I want to have the multimedia codex. Let's get you closer so you can better observe the installation. And then what do we want to do? Erase the disk and install Linux Mint or something else. And I can create or resize partitions myself, etc., etc. I mean, I want to do something else. So this is a completely new disk and there isn't any partition on it yet and I'll go will say a new partition table please yes 
and then free space I would like to have what if you, the partition table format in use on your disks normally requires you to create a separate partition for bootloader code it should be marked for use as reserved BIOS boot area and should be at least one megabyte. Hey, goodness gracious. Okay, we're just deleting this and deleting that and deleting that. I mean, that it doesn't have an option to simply do a default populate and then, then let me change sizes. That would have been nice too, you know? Okay. Then maybe that wasn't the other option anyway. So a reserved BIOS boot area in the size of, if it can be at least one megabyte, let's make it 30 megabyte. Good. <clears throat> now let's create, hey, come on. You're tiring here in the free space. Let's create the FE system partition. How many megabyte? 2000. No matter how much this is growing, I deem the two gigabyte should be really enough. And then in the free space, let us create a root file system. And that is going to be five zero 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 five hundred thousand mount point is root. And then finally, let us create in the rest, the swap area. Okay. Are we done yet? Okay, then let's say install now. And the, the bootloader shall be on the device itself, not on the partition. Yes, please. Or, you know, both would have been a nice option too. Time zone VNS, correct. And my name and my computer's name. Good. Now we have a password logging in automatically. And now there's some sort of slideshow while the files are being copied. Indeed, I see something to that effect down there too. It has now switched to installing system from copying files, which itself took quite a while. So now the installation has finished and I can restart the computer. Let's restart the computer then, restart now. The system will reboot now. Please remove the installation medium, then press enter, so. Installation mode medium and enter. It took me about 20 minutes to install. This is not too long actually. And now I want to just throw a first curious look at Linux Mint 22. Whereby it is not worthy that Mint <laughs> has not synchronized with the year. So in other words, 
Mint 22 is this year 2024's Linux Mint. It's not the Linux Mint of the year 2022. And while there may be some logic to it, I very well think that this is mostly confusing newer users. And given that it is, after all, an Ubuntu derivative, it could as well adopt a more similar naming convention. So now we're having a welcome screen, which will guide me through my first steps. Okay. Desktop colors. System snapshots. Goodness gracious. Okay, there's quite some greeting here. Let's start with the desktop colors. Maybe, maybe I'm fine. Maybe I'm not. Launch. Do I have to wait or maybe double click it? Anyway, it doesn't do anything. What happens if I click on system snapshots? Ah, themes are appearing. So, and, and now it's appearing like a million times because of course I turned it on a lot of times. And what appearance do I want to have? Mix, dark or light? And what colors? Let's go for green. And I don't see anything else that I could be doing very much. But yeah, the, I'm fine with the mouse pointer. I'm, I'm leaving the themes alone. I switch to green. <laughs> I'm having here a green folder and so on. And then that's it. System snapshots launch. Ah. Snapshot type rsync or BTRFS. I mean, look, man, I'm not going to be rsyncing with anything. But if I have to say frankly, this is not something I would recommend to greet new users with. Like, seriously, what are we now supposed to do? Just click on the disk and click next. And, and select snapshot levels. People don't even know what that means. So I'm just going to close this. We're not going to be doing that. But that can be done either more in a more user-friendly way or, you know, not at all. Driver manager. Yes, please. Check what I have, any drivers missing. That would be practical to do. Thank you. Update manager. There should be a million updates. Okay, I'm having 712 megabytes and updates switching to a local mirror it asks me and i am concurring to try but here it is unclear to me what it actually wants me to do so yeah, okay, cool. These are the main and base repositories. Good, I will not change anything. And what am I going to do here? Install updates. Okay, I assume that the following packages will be installed. Okay.
I assume that I will not be able to install software while the update manager is working. At least that would be normal for an Ubuntu system. And then we're having here also the system settings. Let's have a look at these. Yeah, I mean, what, what backgrounds does it have? Does it have anything very cute? Let's try with the sunset. And I think I can close this welcome window. The question is, do we want to have this dialogue at startup? I would say no. All right, so that is Linux Mint really. And now the question is just, what do we have? We do not seem to be having VLC, which I will be changing definitely. And I will want a better text editor. Also, it does not seem to have things like um, Inkscape or GIMP and, and affairs like that. So these I will need to install. I admit also that I'm not normally using a software manager like we're having it here, but I find it interesting that we're having here both a software manager and a sy synaptic package manager. Is there a difference? I have only been doing this sort of thing from the command line. I did not use any of these tools in everyday life very much. Okay, the software manager is generating a cage and requesting for one moment. That seems to be quite a long moment. Yes, now we are having here apparently VLC. Yes, please install with everything, yes. And okay, it was the up left arrow. Uh, at all to put us back to where we were. Audacity would be certainly nice to have. Okay, let's try at least GIMP. And Genie. Let's have Genie then. But anyway, I should expect here now to soon have, yeah, VLC and Audacity. And under graphics, I would expect to now have also GIMP. So, yeah. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for having joined today. Installing Mint is really trivial once you get over the initial discussion with the partitions. And I wish a happy use of Linux to anyone who wishes to get into it. Hope to greet you here soon again. If not subscribe us yet, please consider it. Until we meet again, have a wonderful time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.